Hi friends and welcome. On today's show, we're going over to hunt with our good friend, Mr. Ryan Hopkins. He has graciously invited me to come back to bow camp and you know any chance I get to go over there and see those great big white tails, well, I'm gonna take it. I should tell you that this year, our schedules didn't line up just perfect. So some of the time I wound up actually trying to video my own hunt. And I should tell you, you probably already know if you were out this October trying to do some bow hunting, well, you know the wind just never stopped blowing. Still, you can't get them from the couch, so I decided I'd run over there, help or not, and give it a try. Friends, I'm your host, Kyle Randall. This is my Wilderness Journal, and I'm going over to bow camp right now. It was definitely windy. Even on the downwind edge of the inside corner on this food plot, every direction you looked, things were moving. And as the sun started to settle, a few clouds blew in. I could see there were a few deer tracks in one of the scrapes I'd made a couple of days earlier. But so far, that's all I'd seen. Fortunately, I figured with the sun setting, the wind will finally lay down and maybe I'll start to see some critters moving. I was wrong. I was bouncing and swaying back and forth in that tree. I could actually see a few snowflakes coming down. I even looked behind me to see if there were any white caps out on the little lake. <laughs> the geese were in the air struggling to get by. Friends, it was just a nasty night. So believe me when I tell you, I was more than a little surprised when I saw a deer walking up the food plot. And then I was pretty sure I could see another one. And I was pretty sure this one had antlers. A two or three year old eight point was nervously working his way in. This looked to be a pretty nice young buck, but I was fairly certain he wasn't mature enough, not yet. He was coming right into one of my fake scrapes, and that meant I was gonna get a pretty good look at him so I could be sure. And then I noticed he wasn't alone. There was a younger eight point following him in as well. Even in this wind, there were a few deer moving. So I figured I'll just set it out. You never know what else might show up. The older of those two bucks just sort of milled around out in front of me, checking here and there, and I have to be honest, the longer he stood there, the better he looked. Still, he wasn't going to make four years old, no way. Even with the wind, at least a few deer were moving, and friends, I have to be honest, the larger of those two eight points, that a little bit older buck, he certainly had my attention. Unfortunately, I had one little problem. Ryan and I had already agreed we were going to try to stick to four-year-old or better deer, and I just couldn't convince myself he was going to make that four-year mark, so I had to pass him, and believe me, that's tough to do when you got him right there, you set a buck trap, make a scrape, and they come right in. <laughs> yeah, but still, that's the deal. If you want to get an old one, you can't be dragging a young one, so... I was keeping my eye on that young buck when I noticed the doe that had worked her way up the food plot had now come back and was paying more than a little attention to one of my fake scrapes. In fact, she started to ease into it right in front of me when I noticed some more movement. There was another buck, a dandy looking buck, working his way in.
And for those of you scoring at home, you're right. This is a shooter. He laid his ears back and tipped his antlers just a little and that other buck took off. And then he marched right into my first scrape and started working it. All I needed for him to do now was work his way around to the next one and I'd have my chance. I watched him as he worked over that licking branch that I'd made and then, and then he came. He was cautious, fairly tentative at first, but I was pretty certain he was coming. Finally, he stepped right into the trap. I still had one hand on the camera, but I already had the bow in my other hand. Now all I needed to do was stay calm, keep the camera pointed down, and, and wait for him to turn. I hear you screaming, shoot, <laughs> and you're right. I should have taken that shot right there. There was definitely a four-year-old or older buck, and I had him right there in my buck trap. Unfortunately, I kind of goofed up. I definitely had him right where I needed him, but by the time it occurred to me to let go of the camera and draw the bow, he actually turned and started coming right straight at me. I figured no big deal, just let him sniff around, he'll turn, give me another chance. I may have already missed one good chance, but that didn't mean this was over. Yeah, 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 now, now it's over. <laughs> Confucius say he who hesitates goes without venison. <laughs> Friends, I just messed that up. I just didn't transition from cameraman to hunter quick enough. One of the challenges of video in your own hunt is knowing when to let go of that camera and then draw your bow. And to tell you the truth, I just waited too long. Even after all these years, I still make mistakes. And trust me when I tell you, that was a big one. I stood there kicking myself when I noticed movement again halfway between me and the lake. One of the younger eight points from earlier was working his way past. He certainly wasn't coming in, but I reasoned that if he was moving, maybe I'd see more deer before it got dark. And just after he passed, I caught more movement and as a porcupine. I watched him work along and then I just stood there for a little bit and then again I caught movement and this time it was a turkey. Actually three of them. Truth was, I actually did have a fall turkey tag in my pocket. 
and these were some pretty good birds, but no, I wasn't really turkey hunting, <laughs> not just then. Turkeys and porcupines are certainly entertaining enough, but I didn't see another mature deer the rest of that night, and I wasn't really surprised. Even when I went back a couple of days later, the wind was still blowing 10, 20 mile an hour, and I wasn't real sure I was going to see any then either. The sun was coming and going, and that was kind of nice, but the wind was obviously still shaking things. So I was a little surprised when I noticed a young deer looked like a spike buck out in the food plot. And not long after that, another youngster came working her way in. Actually, there were a couple of does and fawns. And every once in a while they'd throw their head up and look around, but I couldn't see nothing save a squirrel making a little bit of racket. That is until I noticed a small buck working his way in out of the pines. This definitely wasn't a shooter, but he was working right up in my lap. I watched him easing by until he threw his head up and looked back. I looked and there was a nice eight point. I think the same eight point I'd seen on the first night. He was still nice and no, he still wasn't four years old, but it was good to see him. I sat there, watching him test my resolve and self-control at less than 20 yards, and then he moved in even closer. He walked right up into one of my scrapes and stood there for a minute, but he didn't work the scrape. He kept looking behind himself, and then he just walked on through the woods. I thought, well, maybe something else is coming, but so far at least I hadn't seen it. And I was thinking, you know, it's probably a good thing he's leaving because I'm not legendary for my self-control. Not when it comes to really nice deer. And then I finally saw what he must have been hearing. A group of turkeys, including a couple of toms, one of which was literally stepping on his beard, came working their way down through the food plot. And following them was a whole flock of hens and half-growed young. There were turkeys everywhere. And again, I did have a turkey tag, but no, I wasn't ready to blow up a deer hunt in order to take a run at a turkey. Not just yet, anyway. And that turned out to be a good decision because just as the turkeys eased by, I noticed a doe working her way in through the food plot. And when she looked back, I could see there were a couple of more coming the same way. And as I watched, I realized one of them wasn't a doe. It was, in fact, a decent buck. And he was kind of hounding the does, pushing them around a little bit. The doe that was out in front of me actually squirted up underneath my tree and just stood there watching him. It was too early for the rut, but somebody forgot to tell this guy because he seemed real interested in talking to the lady. In fact, the doe that was up under my tree made a small circle and he came in right up underneath me. I mean, right straight below my feet. This wasn't a four-year-old buck either, but I have to tell you, it was some entertaining to see him right straight down right below me. He may have been a little too young still, but he was definitely right there. After I stood there just watching him go, I looked back and holy smokes, there was a dandy buck out in the food plot. Heavy, long, big front end. This was definitely a shooter.
through the leaves and the limbs. I couldn't see them really well, but I could tell this was definitely an older, mature buck. And he was only about 70 yards out there. Unfortunately, he never came any closer. He just turned and walked the other way. That 10 point I could see down through the trees was definitely a shooter. Unfortunately, what he wasn't was <laughs> coming my way. He just, for whatever reason, turned and walked off. And I have to tell you, I didn't see another shooter that night. And the next night, the wind was even worse. Just a little windy. I had to take a couple of Dramamine before I got up here. Surprisingly, in all that wind and gathering storm, I did see a deer. A small buck worked his way in toward one of my scrapes. And when he threw his head up and looked back, a couple of does and a fawn were working their way up the food plot. And for the next 10 minutes, I sat there dividing my time between keeping an eye on this future monarch of the woods and the doe still out in the food plot in front of me. To be honest, I was surprised to be seeing anything in all this wind, and it gave me some hope that if these deer were on their feet, well, you never know, maybe some others would be. Yeah, I said maybe. With all the movement and racket that the wind was causing, I was really surprised I saw any deer at all that evening. And with rain forecast for just after dark, I was pretty certain I was wrapping it up when I looked over and... I had just watched that little buck walk off when I looked over and I saw a much bigger buck. And this buck looked familiar. This was definitely the buck I'd made the mistake on a few days earlier the very same buck that I'd had right in front of me in my buck trap. And now, almost unbelievably, he was standing right there. The good news, he was back and he was working his way up the food plot toward me. The bad news, he wasn't alone. He had a little buddy with him, a younger buck, and he was cutting in behind me, and I mean right behind me. At three or four yards, he stopped and stared. Friends, this was turning into a deer sandwich. And then finally, the little guy eased off. Now, well, now it was on me again. Wow, thank you. <laughs> I had that buck in the scrape I made a couple nights ago. And I spent so much time fussing around with the camera that I didn't get ready in time and he turned around, he started coming at me and I reached for my bow and he caught me or something, I don't know, but he jumped out of there. I saw another great buck last night but couldn't get on him. I tell you, hunting here is it's just so much fun. If you love deer and deer hunting, and then to get him to come like that and to see that buck again, that's like a four-year-old, maybe even a five-year-old buck. That's an old dude. They don't make a lot of mistakes. We're going to give him a minute, going to give me a minute, let the pulse rate come down. I'm getting kind of old, you know. It's hard on an old guy. I'm out here videoing myself, and we just got a great buck. Oh, man. After taking a minute to catch my breath, I lowered my gear and then got down myself. It was getting dark, and worse than that, it was gonna rain. Oh yeah. Starting to rain. 
I needed to go find my prize and hopefully I could find it quick. I don't think you could have got much further. Boy, there. Oh, there he lays right there. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah, he's all done. And look at that monster bucket. Put this over here. It's on safe. <laughs> Look at that buck. That is a big old buck. I'll tell you, four-year-old, nice, heavy, good mass. Not a real long poise, but I don't care. This is a gorgeous deer. The rain is starting to come. I couldn't be happier. I was a little bit worried out here. They said it was going to rain tonight, and they were right. But we managed to get this in, and I'm glad I came. Look at that. I had this buck, friends. I already goofed up on this buck, and you don't hardly ever get a chance at a buck like that twice. And this evening with this weather coming in, he come walking back in there. He didn't make it all the way to my scrape. Quite frankly, I didn't let him get that far. That is a gorgeous buck. This bull camp thing, Ryan Hopkins, I cannot thank you enough. You know, we used to do this all the time, and we got away from it. And last year, we found time to get back together, and I'm sure glad we did. And when he said, well, what do you think about doing it this year? I don't think he got the whole sentence out of his mouth for I said, yeah, I'll be there. That, friends, is a freezer filler right there. Thank the Lord. And I managed to find him before it started raining. Friends, that was a great buck. And I truly enjoyed every minute of that hunt. I want to thank my good friend again, Ryan Hopkins, everybody over at Hopkins Trophy Whitetails. Folks, no matter where you chase them, whitetails are certainly worth the effort. And even if the conditions aren't perfect, if it's windy, it's cold, whatever the condition, every chance you get, I hope you go out and get after them too. And who knows, you just might see me out there because wherever whitetails are, sooner or later, I'm going to be there. And if I do run into you, well, you can bet we're going to stop, talk a little deer hunting, and then share that cup and a fire. And if I don't see you out there, friends, well, then I'll certainly look for you right back here so we can share another adventure from my Wilderness Journal.